Morning, family. Here we are, Devo's time again, and we're in Titus chapter 2. We're going to move down to verse 11 right away. And it says this, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That means nobody's left out. Everybody's heard the word. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Once again, not suggestions. These are uh, commandments, actually, if you want to know. Uh, looking for the blessed hope. And here's where we're to keep our eyes focused. And because we're denying ungodliness and worldly lust and living soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, what we're looking for to get us there is the blessed hope and glorious appearing, now listen to me, of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What does that say? Because when you, when you look at the grammar here, the appearing of our great God and also Savior is not what it says. It doesn't say great God and also our Savior. It says our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is saying God and Jesus are one thing, one person. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yes, it's three individuals, but they are one spirit. One, they are completely aligned. They are in complete harmony with each other. They are actually one God in three persons. And so we need to just, if anybody asks you about the uh, the Trinity, take them there. Say, look, it says, our glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. One thing, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people who are zealous, fired up, impassioned for good works. But here we go with something really important. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke. Again, it's talking about, man, don't let anybody tell you any different. Don't let people disrespect the leadership in your church. Don't let people be gossipy. Don't let people be rebellious. Don't let people be disobedient. Because they're not being disobedient to you. They're being disobedient to the Word of God. And therefore, they're being disobedient to God Himself. Because it says, in the volume of the book, it was written of me. Jesus said that himself in Hebrews. In the volume of the book, it was written of me to do your will, O God. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So if you're disobedient to the Word of God, you're being directly disobedient to God himself. Feature that. So then it goes on. He did it to purify for himself his own people zealous for good works. That's why he gave himself for us, that we might be purified for God, who are his own special, special people zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. That means don't back down, don't back up. Stand your ground and be God's person. Be God's person. It's so important, obedience. But it's not obedience that's so important. It's that understanding that obedience is a product. Obedience is a product of your belief. We obey because we believe. We obey because we desire God. We obey because we know it is the only way to demonstrate that we understand the truth, that we understand who Jesus is, that we understand what God has done in the sacrifice of his son. The result of that, the fruit of that, is our obedience. It's our obedience. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good, and we do love you so. 
Help us. Help us to believe, really fully, totally believe, Lord, that we might be obedient servants, bond servants, loving servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. I was a dead man walking until you left the dead man walking back to life. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.